climate of India is known as tropical monsoon type of climate. This type of climate is mainly found in the Indian subcontinent. Monsoon comes from the word mausam, which refers to the winds which change their direction from the northeast to southwest and from southwest to northeast. If we look at the relief pattern, there are clear variations that can be seen within the climatic conditions, within the country and within the same climatic areas. Let us take two important elements of the climate that is temperature and precipitation. And we will see that how they change from place to place and from season to season. If we take temperature of Barmer, which is between 48 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius on June, in June, the month of June, whereas on the same day, you will find 22 degrees Celsius at Pelgao and Gulmark, whereas Dras at the same time, not at the same time, in the month of December, it will cross minus 40 degrees, below minus 40 degrees Celsius. Kerala, on the one hand, has tropical climate with warm and moist air, whereas Punjab has continental type of climate with severe heat and severe cold. The temperature, temperature touches minus 40 degrees in Kargil in December, whereas in Kerala, the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius to 22 degrees Celsius in the same month. The annual range of temperature in Kerala or the Malabar coast will be about 3 degrees Celsius due to the moderating influence of the sea, the land breeze and sea breeze. But in the interior part of India, the annual range of temperature may vary from 20 degrees to 25 degrees Celsius. Now the difference between day and night temperature in Kerala and in uh, Andaman and Nicobar Island may be about 7 degrees to 8 degrees, whereas in Thar Desert it can be 20 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius. This means, means that the day temperatures in Thar Desert may be of 50 degrees Celsius and night may be of 20 degrees Celsius. The difference between them is 30 degrees Celsius. Now we come to the topic on precipitation. Precipitation is in the also in a different amount and in different seasons it is different. For example, in Himalayan region it is in the form of snowfall whereas all the other places in India it is in the form of rain. Chirapunji and Mausimram receives heaviest of rainfall that is 1100 centimeters whereas at the same time Jaisal Mail receives only 9 cm of rain. The Coromandel Coast do not receive rainfall from the southwest monsoons in the month of July to August, whereas Ganga Delta and the coastal areas of Odisha, they receive tropical cyclones almost every 2-3 two to three days of gap. Now the precipitation is in the whole part of India which is received in the summer months except Tamil Nadu region. This region receives rainfall in the winter season. How and when and uh, the direction of the wind we will do it uh, as we proceed with the chapter. Factors affecting climate of India the main factors that affect the climate of India are location and latitude, altitude, influence of the Himalayas, distance from the sea, western disturbance, jet streams, and tropical cyclones. First, we'll discuss the latitudes. Now, India is located between 8 degrees to roughly 37 degrees north of the equator. So places located at the lower latitudes, that is Kochi, Tiruvannathapuram, they have warm uh, climate throughout the year, while places situated at the higher latitudes, that is above Tropic of Cancer along with it, like Delhi, Chandigarh, they are warm in summer but cold in 
winter. Now in this map you can see where Kanyakumari is located, Tiruvannathapuram is also located there only. Then you can see Kerala uh, which is in the southernmost and uh, tip of India and the degrees are 8 degrees and 4 minutes north which is very close to the equator and hence these places have equivalent climate, not very hot, not very cold. But of course, the temperature towards the southern part of India rises because of its being close to the equator. As we move towards the north, that is towards the latitude 37 degrees and 6 minutes north, the places, they have a warmer temperature with marked winter season, especially above Tropic of Cancer and along the Tropic of Cancer. So here, the temperatures, the summers are very hot and winters are also very cold. This is because of the latitudinal extent and Tropic of Cancer passing through the center of India. Now, when we look at this map, that is uh, the Tropic of Cancer and how it affects the uh, climate of India. Now, the location that is Tropic of Cancer 23 and a half degrees north divides India into two heat zones. This is the torrid zone and this is the temperate zone or subtropical type of climate. Now therefore India's climate is also referred to as subtropical climate because it is divided into two heat zones. Northern part of India is landlocked far away from the influence of sea and therefore they have extreme type of climate from Rajasthan till Bihar and that means very uh, hot summers and cold winters. Then it is has a vast east-west extent also. Compared to it, the southern part of India which is the torrid zone here, this area receives direct rays of the sun and uh, it is surrounded by the water body. Then the shape of India is also triangular and it is tapering towards the south. Therefore, the influence of sea is affected in the coastal areas as well as the interior part also. Now the, here you will not find extreme type of climate. It is moderate type of climate. It is warm throughout the year with rarely any winter season especially in the coastal area. This happens because of the land and the See, please. Next topic is or the factor is the altitude. As you know that as we go higher up the mountains, the air becomes cooler or the temperature decreases. Temperature drops at every one degree uh, drop with one degree Celsius at every 165 meters rise. Therefore, the places located at the higher altitudes, that is Shimla, Manali, they remain cooler than the places in the plains, like that is Chandigarh and Lucknow. Now, when we look at this diagram, just see that at the sea level, the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. We move up 1000 meters, it becomes 23.5 degrees Celsius. We move another up, further up at 2000 meters, it becomes 17 degrees Celsius. And further up at 3000 meters, it is 10.5 degrees Celsius. So from 30 degrees Celsius at the sea level, it has decreased to 10.5 degrees at 3000 meters. And at every 1000 meters, there is a difference of 6.5 degrees Celsius or the degrees of 6.5 degrees Celsius at every thousand meters of height. So that is why this uh, the temperatures are very low in the higher mountains or the mountain summits. This is uh, the reason behind it you must you have studied in the chapter atmosphere in class 9 that the air becomes thinner at higher altitudes and therefore the absorption of heat is less and hence there is a drop in the temperature. Whereas at lower levels or the lower altitudes, the dust particles are many, 
many uh, very closely spaced and therefore the absorption of heat is also more and that, that, that is why the difference between the temperature is found. Now the influence of the Himalayas, it is felt in India in two ways. It is Himalayas are known as the climatic divide and they because of two reasons because one they obstruct the moisture laden wind coming from the Arabian Sea, Bay of Bengal and because of that only India receives rainfall and secondly it also uh, stops the cold chill wind coming from Central Asia to enter in India and hence helping it in getting not very cold. The Himalayas in the north act as a climatic barrier by restricting movement of monsoonal winds and force them to shower rains in Indian subcontinent on the one hand and on the other hand it restricts the chilled Central Asian winds to enter India from the north. Then we come to another factor that is distance from the sea. Now the places which are located in the coastal areas they have moderating influence of the sea and therefore the temperature there is not much temp, uh, difference in the temperature found the summers and winters the temperature will be almost the same kind and this happens because of the land and sea breezes which have a cooling effect in the coastal region and that is why you will find that kolkata chennai mangalore tiruvannathapuram they all have equable or moderate climate while the places which are far away from the sea like Bhopal, Lucknow, Jaipur, they experience an extreme climate that is very warm summers and very cold winters. As you can see in this map, the arrows which are made in blue color, these are all uh, showing the places which are situated in the coastal region. And if you have been to these places, I don't think you would have carried your woolen clothes when you have gone there in the winter season because the temperature here is generally on a warmer side and uh, there is not much difference between the summer and winter season. It's all the, almost the same. Other than that, you come to the places which are marked with blue circles like Jaipur, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh and Patna. These you can see that they are far away from the influence of the sea. And hence, the extreme type of climate or continental type of climate is found in this region. All these places, you have experienced very hot summers as you were experiencing in May, the month of May, June, July and uh, July also you'll experience and very cold winters also uh, will be experienced in the months after October. Next factor is the western disturbance which is also known as the temperate cyclones. It or originates in Mediterranean Sea. It has a west to east direction and it moves from the Mediterranean Sea from there high pressure belt is created and it starts moving towards India. As it moves further, it crosses Turkey, Iraq, Iran where they form cyclones. But when they come towards Afghanistan, then Pakistan and finally they enter India, they are obstructed by the Himalayan mountains. Now since these winds are coming from Mediterranean Sea, they are moisture laden but the most of the moisture is lost also. By the time they reach India, especially the states of Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh, they give little rainfall to these states or these areas. The rainfall is generally of 50 centimeters only, but it is very, very beneficial for the rubby crops, that is wheat, which is grown at this time or harvested at this time in India. So it is beneficial for us.
was about western disturbance now we come to the jet streams now jet streams are very fast blowing winds which are found at the tropopause on the higher side of the atmosphere they are polar jet streams also and subtropical jet streams also but in india the jet streams which affect the monsoons are the subtropical jet streams they also blow from west to east in a very high velocity and when they come towards india they are affecting the arrival and the departure of the monsoons it depends on how fast they are blowing or which area they are covering generally the latitudes in between the subtropical jet streams in the northern and southern hemisphere blow is 27 degrees to 30 degrees north and south and hence it affects the arrival and departure of the monsoons next we come to the tropical cyclones this video will explain about the cyclone which happened this year and how destructive it was and what was the reason behind it let's see but Ampan is the first super cyclone in the Bay of Bengal in over 20 years. The previous super cyclone was the 1999 Odisha cyclone, which was just called the 1999 Odisha cyclone. In fact, the category of super cyclone was introduced for the 1999 Odisha cyclone as it was so intense. Ampan is written A M P H A N but is pronounced Ampan just like cyclone Fani was written F A N I but is pronounced Fani. Uh, Ampan is the first tropical cyclone of the 2020 North Indian Ocean cyclone season and it is already a super cyclone coming at us right in the midst of a pandemic. In the Bay of Bengal on May 13 an area of low pressure formed in the southeastern part of Bay of Bengal. Low pressure is formed because of heat. as the sun heats up the top layers of the ocean warm moist air over the ocean rises upwards from the surface as this air rises up it leaves less air near the surface so basically as warm air rises it causes an area of low pressure underneath it immediately the surrounding cold air which is at a higher pressure rushes in to fill this gap then this new cool air that just replaced the warm air in turn heats up becomes warm and moist and then this rises up too and this continues as a cycle then the low pressure system intensifies this happened on may 13 with ampan and then the storm started intensifying the warm humid air that keeps rising ends up forming clouds at the tops and this expands to a whole system of clouds which because of the wind starts to spin and grow in size the center of the cyclone is of course the eye where everything is calm on may 16 the indian meteorological department imd reported that the low pressure had become a depression it was over 1000 kilometers away from the coast of odisha at that point but it started growing and it started moving gradually northwards becoming more and more intense and was eventually reclassified into a cyclone bye so we all are aware that how much destruction was caused because of this cyclone it happened in may only and you must be following it in the news that how much uh, loss of property and life had happened because of this super cyclone with this we come to an end to the factors affecting climate of india i hope you have understood the concept of location altitude influence of the himalayas distance from the sea western disturbance jet streams and tropical cyclones